Thanks for watching and let's solve a difficult integral with the snap of our fingers. And you know how I always like to joke how things get applied to quantum mechanics? Well, this integral actually comes from a quantum homework, so it does have applications. And in fact, let's make this a bit spicier. Instead of calculating x to the 8, let's calculate x to any even power. So x to the 2n, e of minus x squared. And the way to solve this problem is to make it even more complicated. So instead of solving this, let's solve the integral for minus infinity to infinity of x to the 2n, e of minus a x squared dx. Kind of like a reverse Feynman technique, if you wish. Or as we say in French, pourquoi faire simple si on peut faire compliqué? Why makes things easier if we can do it more complicated? Now, how are those two related? Well, if you plug in a equals 1 in this integral, then we can solve the original one. Now, to evaluate this, it's useful to notice the following pattern. So take e of minus ax squared and differentiate this with respect to a. Then using the chain rule, we get minus x squared times e of minus ax squared. And since this was a lot of fun, let's do it again. So let's take the second derivative of this e of minus a x squared. Well, then we have a minus x squared and another minus x squared that comes out. So x to the fourth e of minus a x squared. And now maybe you see the pattern. So we have a minus plus and then minus plus etc. So in general, we have a minus one to the n. If you calculate the nth derivative, e of minus ax squared. This gives us minus 1 to the n, and then we have all those even powers that come out, x to the 2n, and e of minus ax squared. And whoa, notice this x to the 2n, e of minus ax squared, that's precisely what we have here. So in fact, this integral that we want is just a hidden derivative. In other words, this thing here is just minus 1, well, minus 1 to the minus n, but that's the same thing as minus 1 to the n, of the nth derivative with respect to a of e of minus ax squared dx. And now I'm going to do something very naughty mathematically. I'll pull the derivative out of the integral. Oh no, probably some dominated convergence thing going on. And we get minus 1 to the n times the nth derivative of that integral e of minus ax squared dx. But look, this integral we can evaluate explicitly because this is just a Gaussian integral. But more precisely, after u sub, I think if you do u is square root of ax, so we get here a is positive, then if you evaluate this, this becomes minus 1 to the n. This 1 over square root of a, so the nth derivative of 1 over square root of a, and the integral from minus infinity to infinity of e of minus u squared du. And I totally forgot to wear my Gaussian integral shirt, but this thing here is square root of pi. So a delicious slice of square root of pi. So again, this complicated integral just becomes minus 1 to the n times square root of pi times the nth derivative of this square root function. Okay, just what we wanted. And now this derivative, we can explicitly calculate it because 1 over square root of a, that is a to the minus 1 half. And then just do this n times. So minus 1 to the n square root of pi, and then, well, 
minus one half, minus one half, minus one, up to, again, we do this n times, so minus one half, minus n minus one, and then n powers come out of that, a to the minus one half, minus n. This is good because, again, we have differentiated all the a's. And here is where we now use the fact that we just need a equals 1. <clears throat> because if a equals 1, then we get our original integral. And on the one other hand, this becomes 1. So really, all that's left to simplify is to simplify this expression. But this is not too bad, so minus 1 to the n squared of pi. So here we have n negative signs, so another minus 1 to the n. And then we get 1 half, this is 3 halves, and then I think 5 halves, 7 halves, etc. until 1, and here the signs get flipped a little bit, 1 plus 2n and then uh, minus 2 over 2. And then the cool thing is, on the bottom, we have all those powers of 2. And by the way, so this, those minus signs kind of cancel out. We have an even number of minus signs. So you get square root of pi, 2 to the n, and then 1 times 3 up to 2n minus 1. Now, you can leave it as that. That's completely fine. The top of all the odd numbers between 1 and 2n minus 1. But we can actually write this even further in terms of factorials in a very neat way. Because what do you do? You have all those odd numbers. Well, just interlace all the even numbers as well. So do 2, 4, 6, up to, interestingly, 2n. And well, to make this valid, you also have to divide by all those even numbers. 2, 4, up to uh, 2n. All right. Now, the top becomes 2n factorial. And the bottom becomes, so 2 to the n, and even this we can write in terms of factorials because notice if you factor out a 2 from each term, so 2 to the n terms, then this becomes 1 times 2 times 3 times n, which is another factorial. And so we get square root of pi 2n factorial over 2 to the n plus n, so 2 to the 2n times n factorial. Whoa! And this is our integral, which now has this nice expression. And of course, let's finish our job, because we started with x to the 8. So now let's plug in n equals 4 here. Then we get square root of pi, and then 8 factorial over 2 to the 8 times 4 factorial. And let's see, I've written this down somewhere. Yes, and if you calculate this, you get 105 over 16 square root of pi, which is, well, not roughly, I guess you can calculate this exactly, but I think roughly 11.63. And again, somehow it appears in quantum mechanics. That I don't know, but maybe you can put it in the comments. And by the way, I believe you can then also calculate the result for odd n by just doing a simple integration by parts. But again, leave, let me know in the comments what you found. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.